We're joined here by Scott Lakeham, the Vice President for Athletics at the University of Portland. And Scott, some big news today as the West Coast Conference decides to postpone the fall sports season. Not really a huge surprise since this seems to be the direction that most collegiate conferences are going nationwide. But overall, let's just hear your thoughts on the decision. I agree with you that it's uh, probably the least shocking announcement out of the conference office in a while. Uh, we've been probably two, three weeks in the making watching other conferences and watching how the national landscape evolved. It's the right decision uh, unequivocally, uh, even for a school like ourselves that was a little further along, right? We were, we were into soccer practices and volleyball and small group settings and two months into testing. And it, I just, even with where we are compared to some schools, even the WCC that are still closed facility wise, September 24th just wasn't realistic um, at all. So it's, it's the right decision. And I think it's the right decision because we need time to plan what the spring looks like. Right? And we were unanimous as athletic directors that we want to give our fall student athletes a chance to compete in the spring if there are NCAA championships or if there aren't. I mean, they're, they're here to compete. Uh, we want to give them that opportunity. Um, so we can start to plan on what those look like. And then also what, you know, what basketball looks like. The, the plan is still to start in November. We'll see if, if that, that's going to happen or not. But um, we've moved on from the fall, and now we'll plan for basketball and plan for what a, a much expanded spring might look like. And, you, yeah, you mentioned the spring. Um, still a lot to figure out, obviously. But how do you foresee this going forward logistically? I foresee the – Baseball, uh, basketball, uh, soccer, double, triple header in March or April. Uh, logistically, I mean, that one is, is tricky. Um, and it's something that you and I will be figuring out together is, you know, tennis on top of baseball, on top of soccer, on top of volleyball. Uh, we're waiting from the NCAA on whether or not they're going to host spring championships and what those date ranges would look like. Hopefully there's some staggering so all the NCAA championships aren't at the exact same time and you have some flexibility to move things around. Uh, but it's, you know, it's the right thing to do. And we're blessed from a facility standpoint. It doesn't scare us at all, right? We, Merlot Field is our soccer field. We don't share it with anything else. Uh, we've got a new baseball facility. Um, volleyball and basketball can coexist. So from a facility standpoint, uh, we're blessed that it's not an issue. Uh, but I'm sure once we get those seven schedules and lay them on top of each other, there will be some interesting scenarios. And let's talk about tickets, specifically season ticket holders and those who have already purchased tickets for this fall. What will be their options? Well, first, we, we thank them for their continued support. Uh, second, uh, the UP ticket office, um, likely Dave Taylor or a member of our staff will be in touch with them with um, three options. Uh, one would be a, a refund. Uh, one would be a credit for the upcoming season, and one would be the chance to uh, donate that money back to the Pilot Athletic Fund and UP Athletics. And also, you did mention that there have been student athletes on campus for the past uh, several weeks, and women's soccer, men's soccer, and volleyball had already begun officially training for this fall. What happens to these student athletes now? Well, a lot will depend on what NCA rules and regulations look like. You just mentioned soccers and volleyball that are in their playing seasons now. They can practice 20 hours a week. The reality is the NCAA is probably going to knock that down to about eight hours a week, so that will look different. Uh, when we planned and brought these student athletes back, it was with the intention of playing a season and having classes in the classroom. Uh, with neither of those happening, I think we're working through, and the option for a lot of our student athletes at this time, the best is to – to go home and train at home and, and be with their family. And we'll bring them back as soon as it's safe to do so and get ready for their seasons. Uh, we do have local student athletes. We have some that are in houses in the neighborhood and we'll continue to facilitate you know, voluntary workouts to the extent we, we can and still social distance and not sharing balls and all the things that we have to do in COVID. Um, but I imagine a, a good part of that population will go home and about two, three weeks ago, when we saw this start to develop, uh, we told our cross-country student athletes and our spring student athletes, unless you've got a lease situation with the house or otherwise, 
probably best just stay where you are because we don't want you to get on a plane and then have to go home two days later. Eligibility, big issue here, not just for the fall sports, but for all the sports all year long. And then the, it's probably inevitable that there will be some student athletes that opt out of this season. How does that impact their eligibility? Well, we're, I mean, we're like any other school, I think in the WCC and most in division one, if, if they want to take that opportunity and, and opt out and redshirt, um, they are absolutely a hundred percent welcome to do that given the circumstances. Uh, it will be interesting, you know, from a, from a scholarship standpoint, I think all schools are trying to work through, you know, in some of these sports, we have student athletes committed that are sophomores and juniors in high school right now. Um, and those scholarship numbers could get tight and you're going to get, um, I think some log jams that we're seeing in baseball already, right. With those spring sports that were postponed and those log jams, and those are just going to get harder. I think we need some clarification from the NCA. Are they going to allow us to do what we did in the spring? Uh, I'm not sure that's financially completely feasible today, the way things stand. Um, but I would imagine there will be some relief on scholarship limits and otherwise as people can make it work. And let's go back to basketball. Uh, you mentioned it's unaffected by this current decision uh, as of now. How do you see that process going forward? Basketball is interesting. I have a, after this call, I'm jumping on a, a WCC basketball scheduling call where we're going to talk through a lot of these pieces. Obviously, the first domino dropped with the Pac-12 waiting till January. Uh, our men's basketball was supposed to play at Washington. Uh, women's basketball was supposed to go to Arizona State. Uh, we were going to have the Ducks in the Child Center. Um, so those, you know, those games are obviously taken from the record at this point. I would not at all be surprised if we have an abridged non-conference schedule in January. And then, you know, maybe even a single round robin in league. Um, but there is some appetite, I think, to play one another. Uh, and I love the pod concept. Uh, if, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was mixed on it. Uh, but the idea of having, you know, four, five, six Pacific Northwest teams go to the same arena for a week, keep them in a hotel, keep them isolated, and you can play three, four non-conference games in one shot. I think that that's, that's probably the way it's going to go. Um, that being said, we're, you know, we're ready for November. Um, back to your previous question. The basketball student athletes are going to, they'll remain um, and they'll, you know, they're supposed to start practice, I believe it's September 29th. So we're, we're planning for that date. And if it's changed, like everything else has been since you and I have been talking in March, we'll, we'll go to plan B or plan C or plan Z. Something else that's impacted by all of this are pro sports drafts. Different sports drafts go on throughout the year. Do you see Portland's rosters perhaps being impacted by these drafts? That's a great question. Um, soccer is, I think soccer is very much in play, right? If, if you play a spring season, uh, we could very well have some men's or women's soccer players uh, drafted that don't play this year. And I think you're really going to see that with, you know, some of the power five programs as well. So I think it will change what the top 25 looks like in conference standings and otherwise. Baseball is the one that's been fascinating. And I, I think you and I talked about it off camera previously is the draft is shorter now. There's likely going to be fewer minor league teams. That's going to benefit. I think college baseball this year, um, if, if played as we hope, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of student athletes, including a handful of ours, that should probably be in the minor leagues right now. Uh, but there was nowhere to go uh, with a short draft and now fewer teams. So those are the two sports I look at and say, yeah, there's going to be an impact. I think baseball's benefited. I think soccer, it could be a challenge. And obviously with no fall sports, a huge hole is left in the, the fall schedule. What do you see uh, UP Athletics focusing on, focusing on as we go forward? Well, preparing for the next one. I mean, it's, you know, we could say we don't have a ton going on, but we can also say, you know, how do we figure out how to play 11 or 12 sports in the same season? Um, so there's a lot of planning that's going to go into uh, what basketball would look like and what, baseball and soccer at the same time look like and volleyball and tennis at the same time. Um, that's, it gives me a headache sometimes when I start to, to put it all on paper. I can only imagine how some of the staff will feel um, about the, those logistical hurdles that we'll, we'll figure out. 
but in the meantime, it's, it's business as usual. I mean, we'll still, we'll have um, some voluntary workouts. Uh, hopefully we'll have our, our coaches out on the field with, with pods of players. Our trainers will be doing their thing. The weight room will be open as long as Multnomah County allows us to. And I think you'll continue to see a lot of content like this from a media standpoint uh, when we won't have game footage. Scott Lakin, Vice President for Athletics at the University of Portland. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. I know you're extremely busy these days. Thanks, Adam. Good to see you.